Thank you for joining me today. We're going to call these segments Time with Trey, and they're going to be about 10 minutes long on a daily basis, and we're just going to get into God's Word. This is for those who want to go deeper in their relationship with God. We're going to learn how to apply the Word, how to become doers of the Word. We're going to position ourselves to learn God's heart, learn God's mind, and grow. Be the best us we can be. So get your pen, paper, let somebody know. Let's keep growing. Keep going. Hello, my name is Trey Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us today on Time with Trey. And we are talking about the importance of understanding our righteousness. I hope that you've been getting a lot out of these teachings. They're 10 to 15 minute long. They're not too long, but there are several scriptures where we can begin to renew our mind to the Word of God and how God sees us and how important it is to see ourselves correctly. So we're going to get right into it. You know, last time we talked about having a sin consciousness. Well, today I want us to talk about having a righteousness consciousness or a righteous mindset. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 and 34 says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good character. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God, and I speak this to your shame. Awake to righteousness. He's saying, wake up and see yourself correctly. Because of Jesus, we're made right. You are in right standing with God. If you're a born-again child of God, if you haven't been living right, or if you've been sinning, or doing this, or doing that, ask for forgiveness. We've learned this, 1 John 1, 9, and He's faithful and just to cleanse us and to forgive us. But he says, awake to righteousness. That's what we're, we're focusing on today. Am I awake to righteousness? Have I woke up to my right standing with God? 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who made no sin, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when we awake to our right standing, we realize that he who knew no sin, Jesus, was made sin with our sin that we might be made righteous with his righteousness by his goodness. He is so good. It's when we believe in Jesus, we're made right. We were in wrong standing with God. We called upon Jesus. Now we're in right standing with God. And he wants us to wake up to the revelation of this and begin to rule and reign in this life through one man, Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 17, it says, For because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, His unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with Himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So notice this, the gift of righteousness putting them into right standing with Himself. When we called upon the name of Jesus, we're a new creation in Christ Jesus. We're made right. And He says, wake up to this realization. Become righteous consciousness, righteous minded. Begin to think like you're right. Begin to think, not because you're so good, but because He's so good, you're made right. Now this, the reason I give so many scriptures during our sessions here is because God's Word never fails. It's God's Word that reveals His heart. It's God's Word that sets us free. It's God's Word that takes us up. It's God's Word that reveals God's heart to us. And He's saying, I need you to wake up that you're made right with me because of Jesus. Now, when this becomes a reality, so we're recreated. He says, now renew your mind that you're right. So you're new, you're renewing, and you're right. You're righteous because of Jesus. When this becomes a revelation, we begin to realize that the greater one lives on the inside of us. First John 4, 4, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The greater one. I, I encourage you to start meditating on that. The greater one is on the inside of me. I am right with God because of Jesus. And when I begin to realize the greater one is in me, now Ephesians 3, 20 becomes real to me. I'll just read it in the Amplified. It says, Now to him, I was going to quote it, but it's more beneficial for you to look at the Word of God, you to write this down, get it in you. Now to him who by consequence of the action of his power that is at work within me, 
is able to carry out His purpose and to do super abundantly far over above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers and desires and thoughts and hopes and dreams. Think about that. God wants us to be confident of the work the Holy Spirit does on the inside of us. We have the same access to the help of the Holy Spirit that Jesus had in His earthly ministry. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, when you're made right, the nature of God comes into you. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, and He wants us to wake to righteousness. He wants us to be aware of our righteousness. Then He begins to teach us about our rights as a child of God, our rights in the kingdom of God. Remember Colossians 1, verses 12, 13, it says you and I were, were made fit to be partakers of our inheritance. He says you've been delivered from the power of darkness, brought into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You're in the kingdom, and the Holy Spirit wants you to awake to righteousness. That's the heartbeat of today, awake to righteousness. And when you do, Satan loses his hold on your life. Sin loses its hold on your life. You quit beginning to think like a defeatist. You change. When you awake to righteousness, you have a righteous mindset. Instead of weakness, you begin to think about strength. Instead of sickness, you begin to think about healing. Instead of poverty, you begin to think about prosperity. Instead of decrease, you begin to think about increase. A right mind, a right mindset, a righteous mindset. Awake to righteousness. You're made right because you believe in Jesus. Run into the blood. Quit looking at your sin. Quit looking at the problem. Quit focusing on all the dumb stuff that we've all done and focus on the goodness of God. He made you right because of Jesus. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. You believe in Jesus and you're made right. Listen to how the Holy Spirit wants to help us. John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. He says, When the Spirit of truth, the truth-giving Spirit, comes, and if you've called upon the name of Jesus, He's in us, He will guide you into all truth, the whole full truth, for He will not speak on His own message, on his own authority, but he will tell you whatever he hears from the Father, and he will give you the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come. He will honor and glorify me because he will take of, receive, draw upon what is mine, and will reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. That is what I meant when I said the Holy Spirit will take the things that are mine and will reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. The Holy Spirit wants to guide us into all truth, and he wants to flood your heart with the reality that you're made right, that the greater one is in you, that His Spirit is in you, and He wants to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. He's guiding us into this truth that we're made right because of Jesus. So how do I develop this righteous mindset, this right way of thinking? Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 10. The reason I go so fast sometimes is because there's so much ground to cover, and this is not exhaustive. It's just a starting point. It's a study to get you stirred up, uh, your hunger to begin to, to, to work on the inside of you for the things of God. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 10. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires set their minds. So we're talking about how do I get my mind to think on righteousness? How does this become a reality? He says the person who's controlled by their flesh, they set their mind on the desires of the flesh. He goes on to say, but those who are according to the Spirit are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, set their mind on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Verse 10, but if Christ lives in you, then although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt, the Spirit is alive because of the righteousness that He imputes to you. Your spirit is alive because you set your mind. You want true life? You want life and life more abundantly? I know you do. Set your mind on the reality that you're made right. Awake to righteousness and sin. Not Don't focus on trying not to do this and don't do that. No, no. Awake to righteousness. You're right 
The Spirit is in me and He's helping me. He won't give up on you. I've been at this a long time and I made a lot of dumb mistakes in my life. But if you keep showing up and you keep yielding, you keep focusing on the power of the blood and the reality that you're righteous, regardless of how you feel and think and what it looks like in the natural, you begin to have this confidence in God that He'll never leave you nor forsake you. You're made right, awake to righteousness and sin not. Set your mind on the things of the Spirit that you're right can never get away from this truth. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 23. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Now when you give your attention to the Word of God, you're setting your mind on God's heart, His mind, His will, His answer, His promise. You're not setting your mind on religion. You're setting your mind on relationship. You want to know God. You want to please the Father. You want to know the heartbeat of God. The Holy Spirit is here to teach us that we're right and how do we think right and believe right and talk right. He says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Those who find them, there's health and healing to all our flesh and out of our heart flows the issues of life. God wants the life of God to flow out of us, but He says you do it by setting your mind on the reality that you're right. Set your mind on the promise and not the problem. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews is writing. Hebrews 5 verses 11 through 14, and we're getting ready to be done with this session, so let's finish strong here. He says, concerning this, we have much to say, which is hard to explain, since you have become dull in your spiritual hearing and sluggish, even slothful in achieving spiritual insight. For even though by this time you ought to be teaching others, you actually need somebody to sit down and teach you over again the very first principles of God's Word. You have come to need milk not solid food. Verse 13, For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously, listen to this, inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness, of conformity to the divine will and purpose and thought and action, for he is a mere infant and not able to talk. But solid food is for full-grown men, for those whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil and contrary either to the divine or human law. So he's saying there's a lot I want to share to you. You're supposed to be grown up by now, but you're still on milk. You're still being moved by what you see and how you feel. He says you're not trained in the skillful word of righteousness. Inexperienced, unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness, of conformity to the divine will and purpose of thought and action. He says, until you learn to take the word and set your mind on it, and you awake to righteousness, you're not going to mature. You might go to church for 30 years, but if you haven't realize that you're righteous, you're still thinking you're an old sinner saved by grace. You're either an old sinner or you're saved by grace. If you're still an old sinner, get saved. Call upon the name of Jesus. Now you're saved by grace. You're recreated. Quit focusing on the sin. Focus on the blood of Jesus, on the goodness of God. The Holy Spirit's teaching you that you're right. Awake, think right, believe right, talk right, live right. Not because you have to. It's because that's who you are. You're right. You're righteous because of Jesus. He says, so keep, keep applying the Word. Notice he uses, he says, train your mental faculties with the Word of righteousness. You're thinking from a place, I'm right. I'm not bound. I'm not hindered. I'm not, the devil's not bigger than me. I'm forgiven. I'm cleansed by the blood. I'm made right regardless of how I feel or what I did yesterday. I'm, I'm righteous because of Jesus. I received the cleansing power of the blood. And confidence begins to rise on the inside of you. And this is what we're going to get into next as we continue our time with Trey, go back over this teaching. I give you several scriptures because it is God's Word that never fails. It's His Word that we want to connect our mind and our heart and our mouth to. Not our religion, not 
relationship. The heart of our Heavenly Father, you're righteous because of Jesus. Don't you forget that. And I'll see you again real soon. God bless you guys. Keep growing. Keep going. Talk to you soon. I know these segments aren't very long, but it gives us an opportunity to grow in our relationship with God. I hope you got something out of today. Let somebody know that we're going to be here again tomorrow, the next day. We're just going to keep digging into the things of God. We're going to position ourselves to experience all that God has for us. So I look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you guys.